they always love to play the victim like they're they're on the verge of being taken off the air. I'm I'm listening to Slan Ed Hannity on this, uh, and you would think that the big government is getting ready to take all right wing talkers off the air because they're not saying what the government wants them to say. That's how they play this thing out. It's hilarious. Well, now they got to be happy because the FCC is going to do something about the fairness doctrine. For more on that, Holland Cook Talk Radio can. Cons- Sultan extraordinaire media and friend. Alan, good to have you with us. Yes, sir. What's happening with the FCC and the Fairness Doctrine? Well, you've had me on the uh, Ed show on MSNBC a couple of times, and it's, it's getting repetitive because I have heard the President of the United States and the Chairman of the FCC and one of the FCC commissioners who used to work for me uh, all tell me that the Fairness Doctrine is not coming back, but as you said a minute ago, this is their hobby horse. You know, this is their chance to play the victim. And they're, uh, the uh, uh, syndicated uh, radio righties are very fearful of the uh, public outcry about, hey, where did all the local programming go? Because, of course, they're syndicated programming. You know, this is all phony baloney. And Commissioner Robert McDowell uh, has said, as long as this is never coming back, why don't we just wipe these words out of a document called the Code of Federal Regulations. How arcane does this sound? You know, if I got up on your shoulders, me plus you would still be shorter than the thickness of this book, I'm sure. But uh, they're going to purge the words fairness doctrine from the entire federal conversation. And I guarantee you, they're still going to make this the boogeyman. Uh, I read from one of the TV websites here, uh, TV News, or while the Fairness Doctrine was found unenforceable and likely unconstitutional by the FCC's book in 1987, the actual code has remained on the books. Yeah. That will change. Yeah, they're, they're going to expunge the very words. So this issue was already phony baloney. Now it's going to be literally a non-issue. And, of course, the only way that would ever get put back is if the Congress really did decide to do something about it, correct? Yeah, yeah. That isn't going to happen. It's not on anybody's radar screen. Every now and then it pops up when somebody gets a little hot under the collar about something. But uh, what we don't publicize is how many stations the righties do lose. (laughs) Yeah, clearly they control the uh, conversation in terms of sheer numbers, and it's an ownership issue. The same company that owns a lot of the big radio stations owns a lot of the big radio righty shows. That's no secret. Yeah. But the Internet and, uh, you know, all the other new platform ways that this conversation is being had uh, are are finding traction. Uh, For better or for worse, you know, this whole uh, Anthony Weiner uh, fiasco has shown us the power of social media in a fairly painful way. Very painful. Painful to watch, painful to cover, painful to listen to, uh, and politically painful for the Democrats because the story just keeps going on. Uh, Is is this a hot topic on talk radio across America? Well, uh, the last caller that you had on just before the break, you know, this is the kind of conversation we wish was dominating talk radio. Somebody with an innovative idea about solving a shared problem. Unfortunately, We will talk about what people want to talk about, and what they want to talk about lately is salacious, you know. So uh, this has been good talk radio in the sense that the phone's ringing off the hook and uh, everybody's got uh, jokes funnier than the late-night guys. Uh, And uh, some even more serious, thoughtful conversations. Several of the stations that I work with, uh, we've had hosts asking, is cyber sex sex? You know, is it wrong if you're just pretending? Uh, is it just innocent flirtation? So the conversation has taken a bunch of uh, uh, of uh, turns, but the conversation we wish we had was uh, like that last caller you had. Now, admittedly, a wiener being a Democrat means that uh, this is a chance for the radio and cable righties uh, a- a- as a diversionary tactic to distract from the problem they have, whose name is none of the above. Uh, you saw that uh, uh, survey data about a week ago. There is no uh, heir apparent to the Republican nomination, and these ought to be uh, a heydays for the righties because these are tough times for the economy. Every time you gas up, you wondered, you know, uh, is this president got his arms around the problem? And yet nobody steps forward. Uh, Sarah Palin is attracting all the attention and uh, Republicans generally take turns. You know, it was Bob Dole's turn 
It was uh, John McCain's turn. Clearly, it is Mitt Romney's turn. Sarah Palin's snide, sarcastic response about stepping on his toes, uh, you know, makes no mystery of the fact that she's trying to elbow him out of there. And what you hear when you listen to the uh, radio righties is this awkward um, uh, defense of Sarah Palin. Uh, Glenn Beck earlier today was trying to explain that she got it right about Paul Revere. <laughs> <laughs> and yet uh, they're trying to stay at arm's length from her. Uh, every time you hear Rush Limbaugh <laughs> lately say something in defense of Sarah Palin, it is quickly followed by him saying, now she's not my candidate, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, uh, let's talk about who, uh, if, if Romney gets it, it's going to be so snoozeville. It's just going to be boring and I don't want Romney to get the nomination. I want I want Bachman to get her. I want Palin to get her. I want somebody that's going to give us some some good talk radio. <laughs> I think Bachman is going to be a great story in the next couple of weeks because, uh, true or false, she is about to announce, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that, she's going to the debate in New Hampshire. I mean, um, they won't even let this Johnson guy in, but they're going to let her in. Yeah, she's a soundbite <laughs> machine. Uh, she's got to be smarter than she looks because she passed the bar at one point. But the impending catfight with her and Palin is going to be a sideshow on its own because I have said this all along, and I think you and I have a bet a thick steak and a stiff drink on this. Sarah Palin is never going to announce for president. She's having much too much fun. Yeah. And this whole fan dance she's doing with the bus tour is her last chance to pretend she's going to run. Four mm -hmm. years from now, she'll be old news. And well, this is her last chance to tantalize us for the sake of building brand. And the problem is, the minute Bachman announces, it puts Sarah Palin on the spot. She's got to respond somehow, and she's trying to avoid that being so coy. Well, the other thing is, number one, she fears uh, losing twice. Sure. Uh, and uh, Bachman is going to get in, and, and she's going to be a pit bull, and she's going to go after it. And uh, she knows what she wants to say and how she wants to say it. And she's probably going to do well early. She'll uh, at least place in uh, Iowa, right? She can raise money. She sure can. can. She, she can raise money, and uh, she'll do well in Iowa. She may do well in New Hampshire. I mean, you know how campaigns pick up steam, and and all of a sudden there becomes a media frenzy, and then people start believing. People can start believing overnight. I, and she'll win the South. She'll play right into the hands of what the Christian conservatives want in South Carolina. I mean, this this could be wrapped up before you know it. And I just I just don't think that that Romney has the spunk, and that's what the Republicans are looking for right now. Now, which brings me to the guy across the river here. Uh, politicians are absolute masters in changing the boundaries, and if anybody can do that, it would be Christie. I don't. I think he's going to get in. I, I don't. I, I really do, and no. I hope he does get in. I, I, I bet you do, because the guy is great copy. But I've had a, a front row seat for what he's doing, uh, because I work uh, in talk radio in uh, New Jersey, and uh, he comes into our station there once a month and takes phone calls. And what you see is what you get. This is not an act. And uh, he just cannot say enough. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. But uh, I, I'll I'll put another uh, a stake on that with you because I take him for his word. Well, uh, I want him to get in because I think he represents exactly what the Republican Party is trying to do to workers, and I think it would also galvanize a lot of a lot of Democrats, a lot of lefties, and and wake up a lot of middle classers to realize what's at stake because he, he's. He seems to be able to accomplish a lot more than the other candidates. I was just going to say, uh, he's also getting further than some of the other uh, newly minted Republican governors who uh, have found the heat. You know, if you look in Ohio, Wisconsin, and Florida, you see some real buyer's remorse. But for some reason, the people of New Jersey seem ready to take their medicine. They seem to be willing to hear him out more than uh, Wisconsin uh, wants to hear any more from Scott Walker or uh, Kasich in Ohio. Uh, you know, uh, look at the trouble Rick Scott's uh, raising in uh, Florida. But for some reason, New Jerseyans realize that the numbers are untenable and they're willing to hear this guy out, and he's staring down that teacher's union. Good to have you with us, Holland Cook. Always a pleasure. Uh, you're the best. You bet, pal.